Mark Yang, an MBA student, is offered an internship opportunity with an exciting firm in an industry he's breaking into. Although not explicitly part of the job description, Yang is asked to misrepresent himself while conducting market research on behalf of the firm, gathering sense of data while leveraging the reputation of his university to do so. Thus, he's taking on reputational risk and potentially legal risk. Moreover, the opportunity is made available to Yang by an influential business person, also a university alumnus. Yang is not in a power position, but he needs the experience, network, and eventual employment. He has a strong moral compass, and the expectations do not sit well with him, but he's excited by the firm and the relationships he'll develop. Yang finds himself at a crossroads. He must protect and stand up for his moral compass, navigate the situation for professional and reputational success, and nurture a potentially important and powerful relationship. How does he prioritize these potentially competing objectives? Yang's dilemma is characterized by a tension between embracing his values or complying with the employer's request. There are several potentially competing scenarios which we've represented on a high-low values compliance priority matrix. This highlights Yang's paralyzing problem. For instance, one potentially high compliance, high values scenario includes complying internally with management, becoming clean with research subjects. One low compliance, low values option may be to decline and take public vocal opposition against company culture. Each scenario poses a risk and trade-off, which Adam will cover next. Thank you, Matt. I'm Adam Sasso, and I'll be discussing the risks involved with this scenario. There are four major risks that we've identified, three of which are reputational risks and one that is a legal risk. The first reputational risk is to Mark directly. By telling the company that he does not want to misrepresent himself, the company may revoke his internship and this could have an impact on his future career. Another reputational risk is to Harvard Business School. If the press were to find out that a graduate has acted unethically, it could bring negative publicity to the school. A third reputational risk is to the firm because if the public and competitors found out that an intern was misrepresenting himself, the company could be seen as unethical, which can hurt its success in the market. The last risk is potentially a legal one. The article did not specifically mention what sensitive data was being obtained, but according to the Federal Trade Commission, there are several statutes that require a company to safeguard its sensitive data. Therefore, there's a possible legal risk to the other companies for not safeguarding this data and to the intern for fraudulently, fraudulently obtaining it. I'll be followed by Mark, who will be discussing the stakeholders. Thanks, Adam. In this case, there are seven main stakeholders. Mark Yang himself is in a difficult situation, torn between his values and the potential consequences for his personal integrity, reputation, and career prospects. The CEO, who holds the ultimate responsibility for setting company-wide ethical standards, and their response will show the company's commitment to upholding and ensuring those expectations are met. The office executives in Asia who have made the questionable requests, causing him to have ethical concerns, highlighting the differing perspectives on business practices and ethics. The company's competitors, who have unknowingly become entangled in this dilemma, are therefore at risk of exposing their sensitive data due to Mark's potential misrepresentation. Harvard University's reputation as the ethical conduct of its students and alumni reflects on the institution's commitment to ethical values and principles. Mark's friends, family, faculty, etc., who provide him with support, offer advice, and influence his decision-making process. And finally, any future employers, as how Mark handles ethical challenges he is faced with reflects his character and decision-making abilities, potentially impacting his future career opportunities. All of these stakeholders face potential legal consequences and or reputational risks associated with the decision that Mark Yang ultimately makes. And with that, I now pass things over to Kay to begin outlining the potential solutions. Solution number one, Mark can choose to ignore his boss request and instead work on the assigned project ethically. On the bright side, he will have a peace of mind, be able to keep a clear conscience. He will be following the law by not committing a cram. In this case, the cram is pretexting if he misrepresent himself when reaching out to the competitors and he will be able to protect his reputation and his credibility. However, he may upset the boss for not following his advice to falsify his identity. He will likely be unable to collect sensitive competitors' data, which will potentially impact 
his performance review at the end of the internship negatively. Next, Kimmy will discuss the second solution. Thank you, Callie. For solution two, Mark can attempt to work on an alternative project. There are two ways to go about this solution. First is for Mark to request to be reassigned to a different project. The benefit of this decision would be that he would maintain his internship, hold true to his ethical values, protect his reputation and credibility, and have an opportunity to work on another project for the company. The potential downfall of this decision would be to decline the initial project can potentially leave a negative impression with the head of the Asia office and the alternative project may be less substantive. Mark can also approach the decision of working on an alternative project by proposing a project. In addition to the previously mentioned benefits, this approach would demonstrate Mark's strong ethical values, drive, and interest in joining the company. Mark would also be providing a valuable service to the company. On the other side, an additional possible downfall of this approach is the potential that the proposed project is not fully supported by stakeholders impacting its success or even launch. I'll now turn it over to Jill for more solutions. A third solution we developed entails addressing the broader issue of ethical behavior at the firm's Asia office by bringing attention to the unethical practices. More than one person in the Asia office suggested the intern be untruthful about his firm's affiliations when in discussions with competitors, suggesting that there could be a broader endorsement of other unethical practices. By speaking up about his personal observations, this escalation could prevent other questionable and unethical behavior from growing. By first taking the time to review the firm's code of ethics, the intern could confirm the deceptive practice is indeed in violation. It would then behoove him to escalate this reputational risk by either reporting it to the firm's confidential hotline or to his mentor. This way, the intern doesn't compromise his own ethical code, that of the firm's, nor HBS's. Now, we recognize, however, that this newly minted intern has little political power or influence within the organization. In the best case, his vocalization could be met with indifference or in the worst case, through retaliatory action. If the latter, the intern may lose his internship or be ostracized, but he would not have jeopardized his personal ethics nor those of Harvard Business School.